All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. David, East Rosebud Fly and Tackle here in beautiful Billings, Montana. Previous section, I talked about materials for tying soft hackles. In this session, I'm going to show you how to tie some soft hackles. There are a lot of good reference books out there on soft hackles. Alan McGee has written a couple of books that are exceptional. A lot of patterns and a lot of tying techniques. Sylvester Neems, our own uh, Bozeman, Colorado, longtime soft hackle fly tire. He's written several books. And you'll also occasionally see magazine articles and fly tire and things like that. So exactly what is a soft hackle? A soft hackle fly can be a variety of things. It can be a large fly, like this carry special, meant to represent a dragonfly or a damselfly. It can have a bead for the thorax, like this. The bead can help sink the fly to get it deeper into the water column. I think I'm hiding the bead here, something like that. Or it can be a very tiny soft hackle fly, like this olive and starling, to represent midges. And that's the thing about, it's kind of hard to see in contrast here, but that's the thing about soft hackles. I feel like they're extremely underused, yet they probably can represent more different insects and more different life cycles of that insect than any other single fly that we tie. Many fly fishermen th seem to think that all mayflies, all caddisflies pop to the surface and emerge, and that's simply not true. Almost all caddisflies emerge from the bottom of the stream and come up to the top. Many mayflies also um, sh uh, remove their shuck at the bottom of the stream and swim up to the surface. During that period from the bottom to the top, they're extremely vulnerable and all they are is arms and legs and wings all in a tangle trying to get to the surface. Many of them don't break through the meniscus the first time. They drop back down, they flow with the current, they come back up. This whole time they're extremely vulnerable. So when fishermen see fishing bulging near the surface and they see the occasional dry fly or caddis fly hopping off, they immediately think of a dry fly. Whereas most of the time, these fish are actually taking emergers and soft hackles represent those better than any other fly you can tie. The principal movement or the principal trait of a soft hackle is movement. And that's why we use soft hackle material like grouse, pheasant, um, partridge, and things like that. We want long webby feathers that will move in the, in the water. I already talked about the types of soft hackle materials in the previous video, so I won't go over that again. But I will show you <coughs> a couple of flies, excuse me, that are extremely easy to tie. A soft hackle can be as easy as you need it. This is simply going to be thread, some dubbing, and a guinea feather. So I like to start the thread right behind the hook eye and we're just going to wrap a thread base. I'm using a size 12 hook here just so that you can see a little better what I'm doing, but this is probably about the largest practical size for a soft hackle. Most of them are going to be more useful to you in a size 14, 16, and even 18. I like to stop the body of my soft hackle right above the hook point, about three quarters of the way, and then we're simply going to wrap the thread back up. Now you can use peacock curl, you can use a lot of things on the body at this point, but this is the simplest type of soft hackle. This is just rabbit dubbing. I like it because it's nice and spiky. What we're doing here is we're, we're building a shoulder against which we're going to force the soft hackle against. So all we need is a little dubbing. We're going to dub it in a ball about a hook eye's back. Bring the thread now to the very back of the hook eye. For this, we're going to select a partridge feather. Now, the thing that you're looking for, typically you want the hackle to extend about the length of the hook, not much longer than that. So if you take a feather, for example, this is a partridge feather. I'll just pick one of the gray ones here. and you simply measure the hackle against the shank of the hook. 
All we're going to do is grab it by the tip here, bring the hackles back a little bit so that they're extended, and we'll measure them against the hook. As we get down the shaft of the feather, I'll remove this fluff. You can see that the barbs get longer and longer as we get down from the tip to the shaft of the feather. So we want to find the happy medium in here where we have hackles that are just long enough for our use. So again, if we measure these, about there. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull everything away from the tip so that we have a clear division point here. All right, the hackle is going to be tied on with the dull or the concave side facing up, and we're going to wrap it backwards. So what I like to do to make the first wrap lay better, I take a few fibers on the far side and cut them as close as I can to the shank. And then we get again our division point, and we lay our division point right at the back of the hook eye. One wrap of thread around it to hold it, and then one and a second wrap back towards our thorax. Now our thread is hanging right in front of the thorax. Clip off the tip of this. Now partridge is fairly fragile. Not as fragile as starling, but it's still fairly fragile. So you have to be careful as you wrap. So this first turn is going to be taken up by the hackle that we clipped off so it doesn't get twisted under the hook. And as you make your turn carefully, you want to stroke these hackles back. We're making turns back towards the thorax where our thread is hanging. Typically, two turns is sufficient. You do not want to over hackle a soft hackle fly. It inhibits the movement. Now with our hackle held up, we're going to make one wrap of thread right against the front of the thorax, one wrap of thread through the hackle to reinforce it, and then our last wrap right behind the eye of the hook. Reach in with your scissor tips and clip off the stem. Now it looks like a, a bad hair day right now, and this is why that thorax is so important. What we're going to do is we're going to take this hackle pull it back, and with thread starting right behind the hook eye, we're going to make one wrap touching the next as we go back. What we're doing is we're forcing that hackle back against that thorax, like so. So we've only made three thread wraps back, and we're going to make a three wrap quick finish forward. That keeps a small, neat head, and you're finished. Well, that didn't take very long to tie, just a couple of minutes. All right, that's, a, that's your basic, simple soft hackle. Now there's another type of soft hackle that's called a flip. The soft hackle is really meant to be fished along the bottom of the stream or somewhere within the column. And like I showed you as a previous example, you can use a brass bead, you can use a glass bead for additional weight. You can hang this as a dropper off of, more, off of a more heavily weighted nymph. You can also hang this off of a dry fly and fish this right in the film. Now a flimp is a slightly different type of fly. It usually has a tail. It usually has a fuller body and a palmered front hackle. Flimp was coined by Pete Heidi, who was a contemporary of uh, Mr. Lysering. And he liked to fish this. He called it a flimp as a, a fly emerg or a nymph emerging into a fly. So the segmentation on the body shows the abdomen of the nymph itself, whereas the collar looks like the emerging wings and the legs of the fly. We can use the same hook, and we'll just tie a couple of different elements on this time. I'm going to start the thread here, 
just get it started. And I'm going to use a little bit of French oval tinsel as ribbing for this. This is a size small. We do carry it here in the shop. You can use wire if you like, but tinsel adds, I think, kind of a classic touch to it. We're going to tie this on the far side of the hook since we're going to use it to wrap and reinforce our abdomen. Catch it there. And bring it back to the end of the shank. All right, now we need some tail material. I've somehow misplaced my mallard flank. So we're going to use some hen hackle here. This is a genetic hackle. We're also going to use this for the actual fly itself because it's longer. And I just want to show you another option. So all we're going to do here is peel off, straighten out and peel off maybe 20 fibers. We want a tail that's about shank length. That's not very even, I apologize. Again, this is supposed to be a combination nymph or nymph and the emerging fly. We'll tie that material in, clip off the extra here. Down the butts, and then we'll come back here, just a thread short or two of the back, to give us room to get our dubbing started. You can use a variety of different dubbings. You can use peacock hurl. Peacock makes a marvelous fly. Of course, it's been called trout candy by a lot of fly tires. It seems to be irresistible to trout. So, unlike the soft hackle, we're going to dub a little longer body here. Bring our dubbing back so it starts right at the back. Build it kind of a taper as we go forward, just like you would a mayfly abdomen. We want to thicken it a little bit towards the front to give us that familiar shape. We're going to tie it almost to the eye. And then we'll take our ribbing, some evenly spaced wraps. Again, this is to give the hint of the segmentation. And we'll bring it right up to here. All right, I am going to increase the bulk here a little bit for our soft hackle to lay against. We have that ball there. Now for this, I'm going to actually use the hen hackle. The reason is we're going to palmer this hackle back, unlike the soft hackle. So we need the length of a hen hackle feather. And we also want to make sure that we have the proper width. Let's see how this works. We stroke these fibers out and we check the length. We see that we're very close to what we want. All right, the same principle as before. We want a division spot and we want to tie this in upside down. This time, however, to preclude having a bunch of hackle trapped under as we wrap, I'm going to peel off the hackle of the side of the feather that's going to lay against the hook. It'll take a few more turns to get the hackle that we want, but the feather will lay a lot nicer. So again, we'll take our division point here, tie it right behind the hook eye. And now we're going to wrap back 
to about two thirds of the way down to the body, like this. We'll take off our tip. Now, again, unlike the other soft hackle, this hackle is going to be palmered just a little bit. I use the same technique when I'm palmering a woolly bugger. It makes the hackle lie just so much nicer. And you can see how the bare stem is against the hook itself, and we don't have any problems with hackle binding. I'm going to wrap back to where our thread is hanging. A wrap there and then a couple of wraps forward to reinforce that hackle so that it does not break the first fish that you catch. Once again we're going to get the front part of the hackle, groom it back a little bit, tie threads with touching turns back to force that hackle back and then we'll th do our whip finish forward. I have an errant fiber there. So it has a slightly different look than a soft hackle. Again, Pete Heidi made this to specifically be fished in the film, but I think that you could fish it anywhere in the water column. It could re represent a mayfly, a caddisfly, and again in the smaller sizes, it can represent even a midge. Take your time with the starling hackle. If you have interest in seeing a soft hackle tied with starling, please let us know. I'd be happy to, to show you how to do it. As always, thanks for joining in. If you have any questions or, or questions or comments, please let us know. You have a good day.